testing one two three this will be a recording from the regular fifth district meeting held november the 9th 1967 saint joseph's infirmary testing one two three testing
guest in the idea of President Johnson when he appointed his president's commission on heart cancer and stroke, the so-called Baker Commission, which was charged by him to study the three leading causes of death and disability in this country at that time, to come up with answers as to how this country could help to solve these problems more quickly. This commission deliberated for over a year, had a great many meetings, and came up with certain recommendations. These recommendations were then sent by the press to Congress with certain recommendations of his own. The President's Commission had pointed out some of the very great needs, and in particular, they had pointed out the great gap that existed between the so-called ivory towers, the research centers, where new knowledge was being obtained at a tremendously rapid speed because of the large amount of money that's being spent on research today, and the average practicing physician out in the community. Certainly, I think all of us would realize that it's almost impossible to keep up today in our own little narrow field with the tremendous advances that are going up. Uh, I dare say that each of you know that of the things that were taught to you in nursing school when you graduated, uh, less than, what, 15%, 20% is applicable to patient care at the present time. 85% of what you learned at that time is no longer right. So that if you haven't uh, had any continuing education, which all of you have, of course, uh, you would be 85% behind the times right now. This pointed out to the President and to Congress the necessity for a better method of communicating the medical knowledge as it developed to the average people who had the job of translating this into actual patient care, the doctors, the nurses, the allied health professionals. The idea came out of the President's Commission that maybe one way to approach this was to make big centers across the country who would become very expert in treating certain diseases and that patients would be referred into these centers for care. Well, I think fortunately Congress realized the fallacy in this and felt that the existing patterns of medical care should not be disturbed, but that we should strengthen our existing facilities for medical care and upgrade the knowledge of the average doctor and the average nurse taking care of the patient to meet these needs rather than trying to bring patients into centers because many problems would have arisen if we tried to make these centers of excellence and have all the patients funnel into there with the patient problems. I think this would have been a bad solution. Well, fortunately, this uh, was not accepted by Congress and they have come up with Public Law 89-239, which is the Regional Medical Program for Heart, Cancer, Stroke, and Related Diseases, and they have spelled out in this program how we can go about doing this in the various states. They left it pretty well up to the individual state to design what program they wish to have in their own locality. You know, in this day where federal programs are becoming more and more uh, dictatorial in what they tell us we can and can't do. This was a novel approach uh, to let the states say what they wanted to do and could do in their own state. Well, this is fortunately exactly what the regional medical program did, though. And we were not told how to organize ourselves. We were not told how to go about doing this. But we were told that whatever we did, it had to be a cooperative venture between all the health agencies and institutions in the community. So we got together with the two medical schools, the two state uh, medical associations, the Negro Medical Association and the Medical Association of Georgia, the extent of the Georgia Medical Association is the Negro Medical Association. The Medical Association of Georgia uh, and representatives of the Hospital Association the League for Nurses, the State Nurses Association, uh, the Nursing Home Association, 
the voluntary health agencies, and many other groups in the state interested in health care. We had representatives from all of these to attend and organize what we call our advisory group. And this advisory group then does all the planning and does all the approval of whatever is to be done in Georgia. Your nursing representatives on this group have as much say so in what is finally approved in this program from Georgia as any other person on the thing. They have as much say so as the dean of medical group, for example. They have one vote just like he does. And I think that it's good to know that the nurses are well represented on this group, both of the nursing groups in the state are. Now, the advisory group sent out a planning grant, which was approved to Georgia, and gave us about $240,000 a year for the next two and a half years to plan for what operational activities we wanted to carry on in Georgia. We uh, spent the first six months hunting the full-time staff, and I was finagled into taking the job of the director. I didn't go out looking for the job, but they sort of pushed me into it. And we have now, I think, a very competent staff of people in the planning stage of this thing. We have gotten together 13 task forces. For example, there are six that are disease-oriented task forces. These six are one in uh, cancer, uh, solid tumor, one in cancer, leukemia, lymphoma, chemotherapy, uh, one in coronary disease, uh, vascular disease and diabetes, one in congenital uh, and rheumatic heart disease, uh, one in stroke, and one in hypertension and renal diseases. Now, you notice that we included renal diseases and we included diabetes, which are not named in the original act, but these have been clearly defined now as related diseases, and just this last month, Congress came out and gave a million dollars for chronic lung diseases to the regional medical program, so that they clearly indicated they want us to include chronic lung diseases as well. So now you can see how broad this program is becoming. This business and related diseases is becoming a very major little phrase to be tacked on to the end of this thing, because the further along we go, the more it becomes apparent that more is being done to coordinate regional medical care under this program than almost any other program we've ever had. So that I think this is the reason Congress is going uh, this far along with it. In addition to these disease-oriented task forces, we have had six others which have been over broad areas, for example, health manpower, uh, continuing education and medical libraries, uh, in-hospital services, out-of-hospital services, case-finding epidemiology and prevention, and the financing of health care, these broad areas, which do not relate to any particular disease, but which has got to have some coordination with what's planned for each of the diseases so that we all move forward from different directions. That if we plan for manpower for stroke and manpower for heart disease, we don't have one robbing the other. Robin Peter to pay Paul never solved any problems, as uh, most of us know. Uh, this business of each agency and each little segment within an agency up in the sour and up in the sour and up in the sour just to drag people around in a circle doesn't ever solve manpower problems. So that we're trying to come up with coordinated plans for helping to solve some of these big, broad, general era problems. And then there's a final task force called evaluation because certainly one of the things that's been wrong with a lot of our programs in the past is there's been no built-in evaluation of what we're trying to do. And we have a whole section over at the Medical College of Georgia of full-time people working just to build in proper evaluation to whatever we do. So that if we spend a million dollars worth of the taxpayers' money this next year on regional medical program, we can go back to the year following and find out with proper evaluation just how much good that million dollars did, where it was most effective, where it was least effective, where we ought to modify our program to make it more effective in the future. So we are really spending a great deal of effort and time and money in building in proper evaluation of whatever we do. Now these task forces began to work about June the 1st and they've been working diligently. 
It looks like we're going to really get somewhere towards solving some of these time gap relationships that have bothered us so long. The same thing is going to be true of the nursing association. If they can get together and talk about some of these mutual problems, they'll find out maybe they aren't as far apart as we thought they were in the beginning. We don't know as yet what our task forces are going to re recommend in the way of operational activities. Our first operational grant is planned for March, and it will become effective in July. So until March comes, I can't tell you what our task forces will for sure be recommending. I can almost for sure tell you that one of the real important things is going to be a communications network which will tie together all of the hospitals with more than 100 beds in the state with the two medical schools by television or tape or something of this sort so that we can have an easy access of new information to every major hospital in the state without any delay. And now we already have seen in practice the community television uh, programs that are being put on at Emory and we are familiar with how they're beginning to put on some programs for nursing, thank the Lord, in these uh, community television. We will make tapes of these and they will be sent around to the state to use an in-service education program in the hospitals. It shocks you when you find out how many hospitals have never had any kind of in-service education program for any nurse on their state. It shocks me. And I think if we could even get this started down at the local level, to get some new information out of these nurses, uh, we will have done a great deal. Of course, the same's got to be done for the doctors. It's not uh, aimed for any one particular group, but all of the allied health professionals will join together in utilizing these facilities together to give us all the ability to coordinate our activities and to cooperate together to bring better care to the patients. I'm going to shut the door there. I think, I think we can hear our reports a little bit better with the... Thank you. Private duty. Private 
Travis Union. One Travis Union. Thank you very much. And Sister Christian left. Shall we count her next at nine on the EATC? She had I, previous. I, I you had fine, thank you. Would be ten on the ACT. directors have met twice since the regular meeting. It, it is at your place to say on the 14th. Excuse me. The annual business meeting of the 5th District Georgia State Nurse Association was held on September 14, 1967 in St. Joseph's Infirmary. The meeting was called to order at 4.45 p.m. by the President, Ms. Pope. Prayer by the Chaplain, Ms. Hanny. Roll call by sections EACT 27, Administrative 68, General Duty 14, Occupational Health 9, Public Health 55, Private Duty 58, totaling 222 members. Late members arriving, total 6, making the entire total 228. The Secretary read the minutes of May 11, 1967. The minutes were approved as read with the correction of St. Mark's Methodist Church in Southern North Avenue. The report of the committee on nominations given by Ms. Sachs, chairman, with credentials of the nominees. The ballot for 1967 was read. Nominations from the floor, Ms. Clara Burkholder's name was added to the ballot for second vice president. Appointment of the tellers was made by Ms. Pope, the president, and were as follows. Chairman of the tellers, Ms. Maddie Lee Wade, and Ms. Mary Gamage, Ms. Evangeline Lane, Ms. Marion Hale, Ms. Edith Honeycutt, Ms. Frances Busey. The election of officers followed. The address of the president followed by Ms. Pope. Annual report of the secretary, none. Annual report of the treasurer by Ms. May. The office financial report was read and placed on file for the district and registry. 1968 budget for the district read, approved as adopted by the board of directors. 1968 budget for the registry was approved by the Board of Directors, but the Finance Committee asked that it be placed on file to be given to the new chairman if the registry continued to operate. The report as approved by the Board of Directors was accepted with their recommendations of the Finance Committee. The report of the exec Executive Secretary given by Ms. Hadkins. A total of 1,141 members with eight associates. Ms. Hammett presented the guest speaker, Mrs. Mary Case, nurse coordinator, Georgia State Nurse Association, refresher training program who gave an interesting presentation of continuing education. Refresher courses for inactive registered nurses funded by the Manpower Development Training Act. Report of the tellers followed, votes cast 228, one illegal vote, total legal votes, 227. President Ms. Margaret Armstrong, elected by 160 votes. Ms. Genevieve Jones received 67 votes. Second Vice President Ms. Merle Lott received 130 votes and was elected. Ms. David Moorhead, nine votes. Ms. Isabel Scruggs, 35 votes. Ms. Clara Burke called her 55 votes. For treasurer, Sister Mary Christian received 163 votes and was elected. Ms. Elizabeth Eden, 64 votes. Directors, Ms. Jean Alford, 79 votes. Ms. Mary Gammon, 113 votes. Ms. Gladys Garland, 143 votes. Ms. Kay Hopper, 124 votes. 
is Lucille Hall, 45 votes, Ms. Carrie McCarter, 35 votes, Ms. Helen Pearson, 66 votes, Ms. Estelle Reese, 64 votes. Ms. Mary Gammons, Ms. Gladys Carl, and Ms. Kay Hopper were elected. Chairman, Committee on Nominations. Ms. Louise Baron, 62 votes. Ms. Wilma Brooks, 25. Ms. Charlotte Sachs, 138, and elected. Motion that the report of the fellows be accepted. Carried. Declaration of election of officers by Ms. Pope. Installation of new officers by Ms. President, Ms. Pope, President. Adjournment at 17 p.m. Excuse me. Let's get page two. It was in the wrong spot. I have to go back and reach page two. Resume of the meeting of the Board of Directors, seven, September 11, 1957, given by the Secretary. Two recommendations from the Board to be presented under new business related to the Legislative Committee and the Membership Committee. The annual report of the Standing Committees, Program Ms. Hammond, Printing Ms. Adkins, Finance Ms. May, Membership and Credentials Ms. Adkins for Ms. Wood, Public Relations, a written report read by the Secretary for Ms. Hale. Bylaws Committee, no report. Registry, written report read by the Secretary for Ms. Honeycutt. Advisory Committee for the Registry, written report. Official publications by Ms. Wells. Annual reports of sections. EACT, Ms. Mowry. Administrators, Ms. Rosencrantz. General duty, written report read by the Secretary. Occupational Health Written Report, Public Health, Ms. Ambrose for Ms. Hanson, Private Duty, Ms. Zurich for Ms. Steady. Annual Reports of Special Committees, Careers Written Report, Insurance, Ms. Fitzpatrick, Economic Security and General Welfare Written Report, Nursing and National Defense and Disaster Written Report, Committee on Professional Practice Written Report. Unfinished business. Three late arrivals to meeting requested permission to vote. A motion was made, the polls to be reopened to, per to permit the three late comers to vote. The motion carried. Mrs. Jean Alford asked for clarification of bylaw changes and was given an official interpretation by Ms. Lewis, parliamentary. Under new business, Resolutions read and adopted by the membership as presented. From the Legislation Committee, recommendation that the 5th District Nurses Association endorse the action taken by GSNA Executive Board on the following motion. That the GSNA Committee on Legislation continue its study of the Nurse Practice Act with the four other nursing organizations and delay introduction of any bill into the 1968 General Assembly until there is an agreement among the organizations. Second uh, resolution from the Membership and Credentials Committee. The resolution read to be accompanied by added recommendation. Committee for promotion of membership and promotion of participation <coughs> in professional membership programs by agencies. Resolution to be sent to hospitals, medical associations, and allied health agencies. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there any additions or corrections to these minutes? Yes. Ms. Starting on the name Paul Hill. Actually, they have, have it spelled A-T-L-L. <laughs> <laughs> Why 
the pages are not right. I started out and I didn't have the strength to bring all 25 pounds and I went back and took all the years out up until 1966 and had a time getting them back together to bring to you. So my apologies to the secretary. Oh, if any of you would like to see the records there on file and we're happy for you to come down. adopted the standards of employment with a minimum beginning salary of 6500 as recommended by ANA. And the ANA position papers are to be supported. EACT section has been delegated the responsibility of studying the position papers and uh, giving an interpretation of it and reporting back to the um, winter board, um, usually in February. Following were elected officers in GSMA, and we are privileged to have our newly elected president here, Alda Fitchfield.
Vice President Ms. Nancy Wooten, Treasurer Ms. Catherine Holt, and I think I <laughs> This was addressed to Ms. Margaret Armstrong, President of Georgia State Nurses Association, 5th District, Atlanta, Georgia. Dear Ms. Armstrong, we need your help. The Community Council of the Atlanta Area Incorporated wishes to employ an Assistant Home Health Services Coordinator to assist in the planning and development of a regional home, ser home health services system. The coordinator, Mrs. Ms. Loretta Roberts, was employed in September 1966. The assistance is needed immediately. Increasing interest in coordinated home care is being evidenced by leading hospitals, physicians, and health agencies in this area. The assistant coordinator will share in responsibilities described in the attached job descriptions for home health services coordinator and public health nurse hospital coordinator. During the developmental stage, we are finding it necessary to shift coordinator responsibilities from time to time as progress is made and as some hospitals and agencies assume greater responsibility for certain phases of the program. A copy of personnel policies and practices of the Community Council of the Atlanta Area Incorporated is available on request. The annual salary for the Assistant Home Health Services Coordinator is 9000 you can assist us by keeping this vacancy in mind and referring any potential applicant to me, Armis Roberts. We can be contacted at the telephone number shown above. We are grateful for your cooperation in this matter. Sincerely, R.C. Williams, M.D., Director of Hospital and Health Planning Department. Do you have the information attached to this is, uh, are the qualifications, <coughs> training, experience, knowledge, etc. So if you are interested in this, or if you know someone who is interested in this position, uh, this will be at the uh, headquarters office, this information. Uh, we have a report of the secretary. I have no report. We have a report of the treasurer. Sister Christian had to leave and ask me give you the report and if it meets with your approval, I'll give you the total since they are mostly routine if you have any questions about it. First, I'll read you the district. Uh, balance brought, this is September. We haven't gotten a report on the other and we'll have it later. And incidentally, all reports are on file. Anytime you want to come to the district headquarters, I would say uh, let us know you're coming. Uh, not to make a special trip because sometimes it may be a way, but they are available for you at any time. Balance brought forward from August $2,070.79 and 
and receipts, membership dues, $556.50, AJN subscriptions, $12, and miscellaneous, which was an ad in the directory, $25, total $602.50, which gave a total of $2,673.29. Rent, salary, telephone, postage, mailing, postage is your big item, $131. That's the what it costs to get 2,000 envelopes. And our uh, supplies, AJN subscriptions, and then we sent $469 in dues to the Georgia State Nursing Association, miscellaneous 9641, gave a total of $1,268.64. Clearing the bank, $1,404.65. We have checks out that uh, amount to $765.50, which agrees with the bank statement, $2,170.15. And on deposit in the Atlanta Federal Savings, 2,209.99. We will just make it to the first, uh, barring uh, no incidentals <coughs> or emergencies. And I might say that that is the only reason that we're not sending you cards. We tried to combine everything in one envelope for Monday. So while I was at the convention on the offset printer, the first seven or eight hundred, perhaps nearly a thousand of your invitations did fine on stencil, but it disintegrated and the next go batch of them had 6.30 instead of 7.30. Uh, we hope that you'll notice that it is 7.30 for the banquet on the reservation card and help us to publicize it. We will send more announcements when we find out what the musical program is. But $55, <coughs> which is a minimum of what it would take to send out for correction, we feel that we're justified in trying to get word to the membership that that was a typographical error. Now that's the district. Um, the um, registry treasurer reports for September brought forward $5,086.02 bill heads and uh, membership dues $318.60 made a total of $5,404.62. Disbursements were salaries, rent, telephone, receipt book, a quarterly report to the state of Georgia, employment security agency, and the internal revenue, $243.43. Total $1,393.68. Leaving clear in the bank $4,010.94 with checks out for $456.48 which agrees with the bank statement of $4,467.42. These will be placed on the file for the audit. Unless some questions. Are there questions to this report? None, Chairman. Am I understanding correctly that the committee on nominations? Yeah. <coughs> right. Right now, Chairman. that report but didn't bring it on. Um. <coughs> 
Ms. Roker was the one. I'm pretty sure those were the ones that were announced from the chair. I thought Ms. Roker was eliminated because Ms. Roker and Sister Antoinette were from the same district. I may be an error, but I think this is right. I will reread then the committee on nominations. There's no question about the chairman, Ms. English. She's chairman. Sister Antoinette, Mary Livingston, Ethne Smith, and Beverly Robinson. We have a total of membership of 1153 with eight associates, and we had two to send in for this year. And fortunately and happily, we say we have six that came in yesterday from Grady's payroll deduction plan, and they will be reported accordingly. And before I start, I will tell you that we tried to find out from the state headquarters some directive to tell you, do not do anything until you hear from the American Nurses Association. They only sent us this material Monday. We got it Monday for our promotional material. You're going to have a little button this year, and uh, the posters are right now. That's the theme they're taking now. They say it's a di indicating that AMA is a di active, dynamic organization, and right now is the time for all nurses to become members. So uh, we, we order all this material, but it will be delayed in getting to us. So we called New York yesterday because one of Grady is going to have a all-out recruitment effort, and they have to send them right away thousands of everything except the buttons. They'll give them 500, and ours will be here soon. We understand it, and I ask about the, what type of report we're to send them in on. She says, you're going to have a card, simplified card. <coughs> Excuse me, I've been on the telephone ever since the convention. But at any rate, <laughs> everybody wants to know how it came out. At any rate, you will have a simplified card. But let me reiterate again two or three things before I give you my report. This is what I wanted to tell you last uh, September, if I had time. And most... 85% got them wrong. So when you please tell them that whatever to do, the divisions of practice will go on the AMA card, select two. You have one section in the state, that's your occupational section, only one of those. And then uh, we only have one conference group in Georgia and that is the psychiatric conference group. Many of them objected to the social security number, but let me remind you, and if Ms. Popo Forgive me for using her name. There are three of them in the state. I looked this, this morning just to tell you, and I had it just here a minute ago. There are three of them. Two of them have moved out of the state, but one of them's a Crawford Long graduate, and the other one is, well, I give up just as I did with the address of that the other day. No. You have a Catherine Pope, our Miss Pope here. You have a Miss Catherine Pope in Charlotte, North Carolina, a Crawford Long graduate. You have Miss Catherine Lou Beck Edie Pope, and she's in Georgetown, South Carolina. Now, they have 176,000 members in the American Nurses Association, so you can see how important that Social Security number It's your only identification number. That's the only reason they want it. They have no further use for it except for the IBM machine. Now, the people that tell me I didn't get my card, I didn't get my notice, these went out Monday, the ones that had the typographical error. They also contained the calendar, and all had been returned. I'd like to read you the names real quickly, and please tell them to call us because they will not have a calendar. They won't get a renewal statement from ANA. One is Dorothy Yancey, George Simpson. If you know them, please ask them to call us. Patricia Ann Edwards, they tried twice for her. Waldine Lucky. I don't think they realize the importance of giving us these changes. Carol Boone, Lois Rupp, that's, no, R-U-P-E, and uh, Tommy McDonald, Dorothy Mary Lowry. 
So their changes of address is all important. They're important in all all headquarters there, the state, the district, as well as A and A and and the state board of examiners. Now let me go back to our membership. I think you'd like to know how we stand on this. Uh, EACT has 129 with two associates. Administrators 267 with three associates. General duty 248 with one. Occupational health 30. Public health 154. Private duty 325 with one, making your total of 1153 plus eight. And we do have the two uh, that will be sent in as soon as they send us the AJ, uh, ANA form. They didn't send those. I think you'd like to know also that we transferred into the district, eight were transferred, and out of the district, 15. We had 55 new graduates who paid half the use this year and will pay no dues next year. 32 of the new graduates of uh, 1966 paid us no dues. So, um, that's one reason, our budget, I mean, in other words, we did not fill our quota. But we've had good response with the resolution that was sent out to all the hospitals and the health agencies. The Georgia Hospital Association will put it on their agenda. December the 17th, we had a nice letter from Mr. Barker and also from Mr. Glenn Hogan, and the response has been very good, that they will help us with the payroll deduction plans and recruitment. I think you should know we have a total of 69 meetings within the framework of the association this past year. You had five regular district meetings, five board meetings, five special call meetings, section meetings 26, and committee meetings total 28. Your executive secretary went to most of them, and, and practically all of them sent out cards except to one or two of the larger sections. And we have sent you 1,400 of calendars out. There are two little errors in that one. And I'd like for the nursing service administrators to note in October that it's on the 1st instead of the 2nd, and the general duty will be on October the 2nd. The um, statements, of course, will not be sent out. We will take in new members, reinstated members, and payroll deductions through the district. At least that's our understanding until uh, we get the manual from the state. Uh, just wait on notification from your ANA. It's been a busy time. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Atkins. And we have a resume of the executive board action. These are the ones I've been trying to read all evening. The board of directors have met twice since the last regular meeting. We have taken the following action. Appointed Mrs. Edna Lewis as parliamentarian appointed Ms. Margaret Thurman as legal counsel, elected Sister Mary Christian as chaplain, elected Mrs. Touche and Ms. Ross, Ms. Bailey, and Ms. Smart as auditors. Uh, there were two motions placed before the board. One was from private duty section uh, by Mrs. Stedman, and I will read it to you. I move the recommendation be sent to the 5th District Executive Board to have voting polls from 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. for voting at each annual meeting for new officers. We request this be sent to the bylaws committee. This was discussed and a motion was made. Recommendation regarding voting be referred to the bylaws committee and the motion carried. The next motion was from NSA section, Ms. Rosencrantz, I move that GSNA invite ANA to hold its annual convention in Atlanta. Ms. English followed with another motion to amend the NSA motion to state as follows. I move that the GSNA invite ANA to hold its biannual convention in Atlanta. Motion carried, 1974. Uh, Ms. Laverne Johnson was appointed by the President as Armstrong as 5th District GSNA representative. She will serve a three-year appointment. Back to the representative to a special committee of the, uh, it's a service committee, which I understand is the watchdog committee to watch this. Um, I don't have the terms in front of me, but the EOA uh, 
Texas Medical Care Program in the 5th District. It is a three-year partnership. Ms. Lott, do you have further uh, report of program? Meet the same place you designated on yes. the 20th. Three to five. Oh, is that right? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Lott. Karen, do you report on the printing committee? The only thing we had was the offset and uh, with the typographical error and your calendars for the year. We have extra calendars if anyone would like to have them, and we did have correction made on the bottom of them, the, the ones that were not folded and mailed out. This being our uh, first meeting of the new year, if we can call it that, uh, rather than going down this list of uh, standing and special committees, I would just ask if, if, if any of the standing, other standing and special committees have a report that they would like to make at this time. I expect that a good many of them don't know they're on the committee yet because they're <laughs> just in the process of really trying to get all committees filled so that they can uh, get together and start their work. Uh, 
Then we will go to report of sections, EATC, Ms. Mallory. Anyone here to report for Ms. Mallory? Uh, Ms. Rosecrans, administrators, anything? We do have a meeting planned on December 5th at 6.30 at Holy Family Hospital. And our new thing, this has a promotional meeting and inviting non-members to join us. So if you know any people that would come in our section, would you please pass the word along and tell them they'd be welcome. And uh, maybe the better call this red for the Holy Family to be sure she knows they're coming. Um, we have elected new officers for this year. Those are first vice chairman Jean Copeland, second vice chairman Alice Clark, secretary Joanne Goodson, members at large Andy Welch, Mary Hoffman, and will be my last year's chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rosecrans. General duty, Ms. Buckley, unless she came in, I don't believe she's here. Anyone to report for general duty? She's been in touch with the office. She had me send out notices to her calling committee to call about this meeting, and she will have a meeting in December. Okay. Occupational health is Langford. I don't believe she's sick. Oh, we have a meeting. meeting. We have a meeting in October. It's program meeting, but not the